Hey everybody, it's Moonbow here, and welcome back to some more Endless Scrap Mechanic. Now, today we're back in creative mode for some more Top of the Shop, the series where we take a look at the best builds on the Steam Workshop from the past week. And this week, there is a crazy variety of really awesome looking builds. I'm really looking forward to it, so let's just get started. Alright, the first build we're going to take a look at is the Peterbilt 379 US truck with no mods, created by the one and only David Baguetta. Now this thing looks absolutely awesome. I have built my fair share of big rig trucks, and whoa, this is... This is much smaller than I was expecting. It looks like this is actually, like, a mechanic-sized big rig. Everything I make tends to be really large, but, like, these are regular-sized wheels. Wow, I love this. Now, in the driver's seat, you can see that the mechanic fits in here very, very tightly. The scaling of this build is, like, perfect. I can't believe how it's scaled. Now, we got some switches, though. What do these do? Okay, yeah, some nice front headlights as well as rear lights. Two is the radio. Three is... Ooh, three is, like, some really nice side lighting there. Those are some crazy-looking glitch welded lights or something and then four ah of course yeah we got our horn oh and look at this the way they're glitch welded these are the horns facing inward glitch welded to pipes so look at that oh that's so awesome now it is a small truck but it seems like it drives really fast and you can tell how small it is when you zoom out like this the trucks that i've built in the past tend to be pretty large, so when you see it zoomed out like this, you just get a sense of how tiny it really is. Now it's time to take the truck off of the jump. It might be... might be a little too small for the ramp. I don't know if we're gonna get stuck or not, but here we go. Taking this tiny little truck off a big jump. Yeah! Oh, uh-oh, uh-oh. Stick it! Okay, that was an abrupt landing, but we did make it. Now, like I said, this truck is absolutely awesome. Uh, the scaling of it is definitely to the mechanic size, which is such an awesome thing to see. And just like seeing all of the detail work, this thing just looks so good. All right, now moving on from one large style vehicle to another, we've got a detailed Swedish transit bus with no mods as well, created by Slobby Slush. Now, this is, I suppose, a Swedish transit bus, um, probably to their local area, so the size of this bus already compared- Oh my god, this thing is- Like, is this normal size, or is it just absolutely massive now that we saw the, uh, the truck before? Okay, so, let's open it up. Ooh, I like the way that door opens. You can see that it, like, did, like, a pivoting motion, and then it gets moved by a piston. Oh, okay, so it turns on the bearing right there, and then the piston just pushes it out as it turns. Very creative looking door. Okay, so we got the driver's seat. Look at the headroom here. Look at the ceiling. <laughs> this bus is massive. Look at all the seats we got. Here's an exit right here. How do we... How do we exit? Is there a way to just open the door? Or, I guess we have to probably open the doors from the driver's seat. And then back here, we got another door. So we can call for the bus to open the door, right? Okay. Press that button. So let's see. How do we open the doors? Okay, so we're going to press 1 to shut that one. 2. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Ooh. That is some nice looking doors right there. You can see they open up from the uh, middle. And they slide out really nice. And 3. Oh, whoa! Okay, three is like a leaning function. Oh, that's very good. Sometimes buses get to like a curb, and, uh, you know, it's like, there's just like way too much of a drop-off for people, and it'd be kind of like a risk to get out of the bus, so you can drop the side of the bus down. That is awesome. So, I'm gonna bring this bus up to the top of the Ski Jump Mountain, and I just, I still can't get over. Look at just the sheer amount of space above my mechanic right now. It's ridiculous. Okay, here we go. The bus is at the top of the mountain. Now, this one might get stuck. I was thinking the truck was gonna get stuck, but this has a pretty, like, large front end here, so I don't know. And look at, like, we almost just hit the ground right there. Oh, man. Okay, this thing is huge! Here we go! Uh-oh. Oh, my God. We're getting some speed, though. Oh, no! I knew it! I knew it! There's just way too much of the front on the bus. 
and we're like just totally stuck. Wait, it doesn't even look like we're actually touching the ground right here. All right, sometimes if you can't drive, oh wait, no, that's why. Okay, we weren't bottomed out on the front. It's the back here. The overhang on the back stopped us from going off of this jump. So maybe, maybe I can just kind of manually push this thing over. Okay, I know, I know. I'm just gonna bring it on the lift. There we go. Drop it. Now it's like a dangerous teeter-totter. Okay, here we go. Bus over the ski jump. Okay, this bus is just not... It's not made for the ski jump. Oh, there it goes. All right, we'll count it. All right, now next up on the lift, we're gonna be taking a look at a thing. It says here it's called Heli 10.8. Now this is actually a swashplate helicopter created by Santa. Now this uses the wing mod for lift as well as for the flight controls as far as I'm aware. So let's just spawn this thing in. Wow, look, it's got chairs on the side here. I guess you could like sit on the side landing gear. That's crazy. Uh, so as you can see though, we've got the wing mods on the top there. We've got dual rotor, and then above it, we've got the swash plate. Now, the swash plate is used to change the angles of the blades in very specific ways to allow for flight controls. Now, I don't know how this is going to work, so let's just try this out here. We're going to press 1. Okay, they're spinning. We're going up. Oh, man, look at this. We're already going up. So, I'm just going to try W, A, S, and D and see what happens. Okay, whoa. Okay, stop, stop. Okay, that actually did something. Look at this, so when I press A and D, you can see my characters turning the steering handles there. Look at the, like, look at the swash plate. Look at that. It gets moved. Very subtly, but there is some movement there. Now, what happens if we press W? Oh, look at that. This is insane. All right, so we know that one is going to spin the blades. Now, what happens if we press two? Oh, whoa, we got like some wings in the back here that rotate. Okay, that's interesting. And then three. Whoa, I heard a piston and I saw a piston. Okay, there's something. Oh, is that like, I think that's just like some weight transfer maybe? I don't know. Okay, we're just going to try this out. Here we go. Taking off. Okay, we're going up. Now, is there, what does three do? Okay, three did bring our weight to the front a little bit. But let's try out these controls here. It's super subtle. You have to be so touchy. Whoa. How do I bring it back to center? Okay, so how do we go up faster? Two, maybe? Oh, there. Okay, yeah, I guess it's two. Whoa. Two is going to bring us up faster. And maybe if I keep pressing W. Oh, there it is. Yeah, look at that. So with two on, we're now able to fly. Now, hold on, though. How do I... How can I rotate the entire helicopter? Right now, you know, I'm able to... I can control myself while facing in one single direction. But I don't know how to control my yaw. Yeah, I'm not, um... I'm not too sure how I'm supposed to be able to, like... Control my yaw. I'm really trying to just, like, rotate the entire helicopter. Maybe... Okay, maybe I just have to do it manually. Look at that! I just did it! Wow! I just did that all on my own. I brought the tail down... And then just rotated it. Wow, oh my... This is insane. I feel like I'm slowly qualifying for my piloting license in a helicopter. No, okay, that's not true at all. This is no doubt much easier than that. But let's try that again. So we're going... We're going towards this mountain. But let's try and turn back to this ski jump mountain here. So rotate it on its side. Spin it around. And rotate it back. Oh my god. Oh, oh. <gasps> Look at that! I did it! This is insane! Ah, uh, but let's just fly this thing up now, over to this mountain. Wow, this is so much fun! This is so much fun to fly! Okay, here we go. We're just gonna go up here now, turn off that super speed thing, ease it. Oh man, this is like... This is my favorite thing now. This is my favorite thing in Scrap Mechanic. There we go, wow! I highly suggest, if you want to have a ridiculous amount of fun flying a helicopter, check this thing out. This thing is insane. The flight feels so smooth, and it's just, it's probably one of the best helicopters I've ever flown in Scrap Mechanic, if not the best helicopter. Alright, so we took the helicopter, we brought ourselves up to the top of a mountain, we gotta get back down again. So we're gonna be using 
this 2019 Mercedes-Benz Unimog truck created by Ladin. Now, it says here there's no mods as well. This is all vanilla, and it looks like a beast of a truck. So let's spawn it in. Oh, yeah, look at the size. Okay, so everything in this video now, for me, the size is compared to that first truck that we saw. And uh, so everything feels really, really large right now. But let's see, is that like a hidden switch? Oh, look at that. That is so cool. It's like the switch is on the interior side of the block here, which is creating, like, the door, but it's also a switch. Love that. So let's hop into the driver's seat here. Let's get a good 360-degree look at this truck. Man, love the detail work. This looks like there is some glitch welding involved with this as well, and I, I love glitch welding. I think it does such a great job with uh, creating designs and builds, so... Let's see though, we got a whole bunch of switches, so before we go down the mountain, let's press 1. Hold on, what did that do? What? 1 is, okay, 1 is the low gear, or the electric motor, or electric engine rather, okay. 2 is the lights, we'll keep those on. 3, more lights, let's keep them on. 4, little tiny horn, and 5 is the door. 6 is, ooh, look at that. 6 is the front hood, and it looks like we got ourselves a nice engine there i like that and then seven ah nice seven is the tailgate that's a perfect thing to have for a truck all right so let's get down the mountain now this thing is really zippy though look at that this thing is cruising fast oh wow very easy to handle and like it, it feels like it would probably want to tip over but like it just it doesn't tip over every time i'm really cutting the wheels in I always kind of expect, like, a little bit of a momentum shift, but there must be a decent amount of weight at the bottom of this truck right now. This is a very smooth ride. Okay, let's take a little bit of a shortcut, though. Oh yeah! Look at that jump! The Unimog! Kind of successful. Nope. Oh, not successful. Now, a truck like this is something I imagine that you would want in survival. You know, it just... It has incredible amounts of power. The handling is really good. And in the back here, you could put a whole bunch of chests. You know, you could make it deeper, and you could put crates in there. You could put uh, the trapped farmers in there as well. Uh, this just has such a multi-use capability in a world like that. I love this truck, though. Looks absolutely amazing. All right, the next build we're going to take a look at is the cool stick I found in my backyard. <laughs> it's the cool stick that you find in your backyard. This is created by Stealthy Green. Now... I remember when I was a kid, I mean, I didn't have trees or anything in my backyard, but I know what it's like to find a cool stick. And let's be the judge of this one here. <laughs> is this... Is this a cool stick? Now, detail look at it. Look at this. We've got, yeah, the beautiful branch system here. That branch system is immaculate. There's still um, what looks like a little leaf on the side of it as well. You know, I gotta say, this stick from the backyard, solid 10 out of 10. Now, next up on the lift, we're moving away from an epic backyard stick to another epic creation. This is the Altai Recalcitrant Guard Tank with no mods, created by Kimo Effendi. Now, this thing looks absolutely insane. It's got some crazy sci-fi vibes going on. Just look at the smooth exterior. Oh, whoa, look at that. We've got a little window right there. Really like that. Now, one of the most fun parts of a tank in Scrap Mechanic is figuring out how to get inside here. Okay, by looking, I can see we've got some explosives in there. Well, that's dangerous, but I guess uh, we'll have to be careful for that. Now, yeah, where is the seat? Okay, here we go. I think I found it. What? Look at this thing. Oh, that looks cool. So I think that's just the hatch, right? And then we go in. Oh, it's closing on its own. Okay. Okay. There's a seat here. Um, I guess I'll just hop into this one. This must be the driver's seat, right? Okay, so let's see now. W. Whoa. Oh, man. This is a crazy tank. Look at this. On the front, there's like small wheels. And oh, wow. They go down when I try and reverse. Now, I'm having a hard time going down that, but let's try this out. Okay, a little low to the ground, but it looks like we might be able to get over this hill. Come out. Okay, whoa. 
the tank looks amazing. I think the ground clearance... <laughs> Okay, the ground clearance uh, might need a little bit more for some all-terrain stuff. So we're going to stick to some flatter land. And now, as far as I'm aware, this is like... This doesn't have a spud gun. See, notice the lack of spud gun here on the front. Uh, I believe what it has is like um, the explosive canister launcher. Now, you can see we mentioned there that explosive... Oh, whoops, I didn't get in time. Okay, whoops, hold on. Open that up. But yeah, so we got the explosives there. Uh, and those are used to launch as a projectile, as far as I know. So let's just, let's just kind of go on flat land here. Uh, so let's just try out some of these buttons and switches, and maybe eventually we're gonna launch something. So one. Oh, that looks so cool. One aims it up. Okay. Is two down? Yeah, okay. So one is up, two is down, and then we got three. Oh! Okay. I think I just launched something. Now, is that gonna do it again? Let's try again. It's launched another one. That's so cool. Okay, so what does four and five do? Okay, whoa, four is a rapid launch spud cannon. Five, oh, look at that. Five is all of our lights, and then six. Oh, that's cool. We've got engine access in the back. Love that, that is so awesome. Just in case you need to do some field repairs. And then seven. Oh, a seven is like a sci-fi horn. And then eight. Oh, eight. You gotta have a radio. Wow, okay. So I just noticed something really cool. When you're not moving and you press A and D, it aims the turret. Let's just aim this up a little bit. Look at this. I can aim the turret like this. And notice we're not turning in the tank or anything like that. But the reason why the driving is so strange on the tank is because when you start driving, and you press W or A and D, look, that's when it starts turning, and then the turret stops turning. You can see the turret is now maintaining that position, and then as soon as we stop again, it goes back into turret control. Wow, that is so cool. Now let's see if we can get a look inside here. Look at that, we've got two more explosives, so... Uh, let's just launch them really fast, and then let's spawn in another one, just so we can see what that mechanism looks like on the inside here. Uh, so I guess we'll, uh, let's aim the turret over there at that downed tank. Here we go. Oh, look at that. Perfect shot. One more. And I think that's it, right? Okay, yeah, that's all of them. So let's spawn this back in with four fresh canisters. All right, so I've got a fresh one here, and I also have another one over there. That's the target that we are going to be launching. Oh, my. I keep forgetting to go into the hatch quick enough. Okay, here we go. So, I wanted to just shoot one really fast here. Let's just make sure we're not aiming at our own tank. I just wanted to take a look here. And I guess maybe I'll have to shoot two, but I want to just see what happens as these fire. So, we've got four of them here. Let's press three. Oh, man. Okay, so that was the top left one. And then let's try, I guess that's going to be the top right. Oh, there it is. And look, it rotates around and reloads the next two for you. All right, let's try this out. Let's see what it's like to shoot at another one of these tanks here. All right, that's looking pretty good right there. Oh, whoa. Did I miss? It exploded. Okay, let's aim a little bit lower and try that. Oh, man. I don't understand what's happening there. Is this thing just not taking any damage? All right, we're going to try that again. Um, I don't know what's going on if I'm just not able to blow them up or what, but let's try it out. Where did that... Okay, I don't even know where that went. Let's just try and aim it straight at it here. Okay. What? Oh, okay, that was... That was a hit. Did you see that? It's like we hit it under the chin, and then it, like, popped its turret up. That was so weird. Let's see if we can't... Like, you have to aim really down, I think. Really down. Try that. Oh, look, see, yeah, that one went right over it. I don't even think... Yeah, okay, that's crazy. Either way, that is so awesome. Look at the crazy damage we did to this thing. There's like, there's like no tank left whatsoever. Now, next up, we are gonna be taking a look at something that looks absolutely insane. This is the Osethus Exo MD300 created by the Evil Sith. Now, it looks like this is like an exosuit style mining vehicle. Uh, that could be used in survival. Now, as you can see, we've got a saw blade on the left arm. There's a drill bit on the right arm. 
No wheels. This thing looks like it is a walker. So let's just see what this thing is all about. Okay, so first you can see we got three suspensions in the back. I'm imagining that those might be used for suspension glitch. And whoa, is it like slowly falling forward? Look at that. This is a weird looking vehicle. All right, let's just hop into the seat here. Now, is it just W controlled? It is. Look at this. Oh my god, it's kind of cute, isn't it? Okay, and it turns, right? Oh, whoa, yeah. Okay, suspension turning for sure, which is very useful though, because, uh, you know, you just... You don't want to have to try and actually use your steps to turn in Scrap Mechanic, trust me. Uh, so we've got four switches though. Oh my god, look at this thing, it's so good. Okay, one. Oh, look, we got an emergency light on the shoulder. That is so cool. Two. Oh, two is our drill bit function. Nice. And then three. Three is the saw blade. And then four. Oh, yes. You need that for chopping the tree one way. And then you spin it the other and then chop straight through. This thing is so cool. And I love the, like, pace of the walk. I, I find sometimes walkers in Scrap Mechanic, uh, they tend to, like, step faster than they should be when you, like, look at it, like, as an animation cycle, let's say. Uh, but this, like, the walking is just such a nice pace. It's kind of like a leisure pace, which is really nice because, you know, there's, there's no emergency here. We're just out harvesting wood and mining rocks. Now, I wonder, I've never tested this before, but I know, like, cardboard is destructible. And the saw blades are vanilla now, because they're- I've used to use the sharp stuff mod, uh, but now that they have saw blades in creative mode, kind of like straight out of survival, I am very curious to see if we're able to do any type of destruction with it. So, we're gonna do a little test here. Which one's the saw blade again? Okay, no, that's the drill bit. Okay, there's the saw blade. So let's rotate the saw blade. Uh, I think I might have to just build that up a little bit higher, and then we're gonna see if we can actually use these things. Alright, there we go. A tree that is actually a little bit taller. Now, is this actually going to work? Let's find out! Oh no! Oh wait, is it spinning the wrong way? Oh, hold on. Maybe it's just spinning the wrong way. I hope that that is the problem. Let's try this again. Oh no! Now I'm pressed right up against it here, look at this! That is like, you do not get more contact than that, but the sparks look so cool! Look at those sparks coming out of there! I can't even, like, does that do that in survival mode? Either way, it would seem as though we are incapable of using the, um, the saw blade. Now, I guess, you know, for posterity's sake, we might as well check the drill bit as well. Okay, yeah, the drill bit's sparking too. But it doesn't seem to be doing anything. So despite the fact that it's not working in creative mode, like, I can see this thing being so much fun in survival. I've been wanting to do a tree harvesting mech for uh, quite some time now. I've got some big build ideas for my survival world. I know I haven't been doing some major progress in it, but I'm just kind of pacing myself with my grinding uh, and all that good stuff, just so I don't get too tired of having to, you know, do all of that stuff. But this thing is really inspiring. Um, I think I might take some pages out of this book, like, just look at the walking mechanism. Alright, now for the last build that we're gonna be taking a look at, it is called the Missile Launcher Inc. Created by VVW, or is it WW, or is it VWV, or is it WVV? Let's try out this Missile Launcher Inc. Okay, there we go. Uh, so I guess maybe we're gonna have to sit in time- some type of a seat or something? Okay, hold on. Whoa, look at this. That is a crazy looking missile. Now, is there even a seat? Okay, no. Wait, it said- it says just hit the keys from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4. Where- where are these keys? Okay, I'm just gonna press this. Okay, <laughs> that's a door. Okay, good. Um, is this anything here? Can I... Is this... Okay, no, that doesn't spin or anything. Uh, let's see. So where are these keys at? Okay, there's one, two, three, four. Okay, so maybe it's like, uh... Yeah, you can see it's like kind of like key switches here. So it's like we have to activate the keys 
all the keys need to go in before it launches, maybe. Um, now, I guess this is just the angle we're going to launch it at. Uh, maybe let's try and... Uh, Let's try and rotate it a little bit so we can, like, hit it at the side of that mountain. Okay, this thing is... This thing is quite heavy. Okay, there we go. It's now facing the mountain. Uh, so it says press 1, 2, 3, 4, spacing them out. I just, I'm gonna read this again. Okay, yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1 second. And then it's gonna launch. Okay, so... 1... 2... 3... 4... Oh! Oh! Something's happening! Oh god! <gasps> Whoa! Look at that! That was awesome! That happened really cool! I thought it was gonna happen without me noticing, but it had like a countdown and everything. Now what does this switch do? Oh, look at that! There's another door on the other side. Now that happened pretty quickly though, so let's try... Uh, let's try one more, and I guess... I'm gonna just kinda like aim it, uh, maybe... In a little bit more of like an open direction, uh, simply because I want to see, like, how far it's gonna fly or like what kind of arc it might have while it's flying. So let's try this again. One, two, three, four. Okay, here we go. Launch number two. Oh, this is cool. Okay, there it goes. Oh man. Okay. It hit this it hit the side of the world. It just kept going in a straight line pretty much. That's pretty accurate. All right, so I'm going to spawn it in for one more launch. Let's face it in the right direction here. Okay, so I just want to get an idea of like the explosive power of the missile itself. So I'm just going to make sure we're lined up straight here. Okay, yep. Yeah. And I'm just going to make a wall and we're just going to drive the missile right into the wall. All right, that's a pretty big wall. Is this going to be enough? Okay, yeah. Looks like this is aiming right at it. Now, I don't know exactly. This is like, I think this is an explosive from the more bombs pack or something. Uh, so, I don't know the real power behind it. So, I just want to do a little test to see what it's like. Here we go. There's four. Oh, man. Just, I love the pre-thrust. Look at this. When the thruster turns on. Yes. Oh, my. Whoa. Oh! Oh, wow. That was a bigger explosion than I was expecting. Alright, so that is going to be today's episode of Top of the Shop. I sure hope you guys did enjoy these builds. They were absolutely amazing, as always. Uh, and if you guys did enjoy the video, then let me know by hitting that like button. And if you guys want to tune in for some more Endless Scrap Mechanic, as well as Scrap Mechanic Survival, then be sure to subscribe to the channel, uh, and maybe even turn on some notifications so you get the latest and the craziest coming from me in Scrap Mechanic. Now, I'm here strapped to this missile. I think it's time we take it for a ride, so let's just press all of these switches one at a time. Here we go. So thank you so much for tuning in, everybody, and I guess I'll see you in the next one. Maybe? Oh, jeez. <laughs>